Hi. Now we're going to look at de Mavre's theorem. And de Mavre's theorem is just going to be an iteration of that multiplication theorem. So this is what de Mavre's theorem says. If I can write a number, a complex number in trig form, then if I take a power of that number, um, all I do is I um, take that modulus and raise it to the power, and then I take the argument, the angle, and multiply it by that power. So I want you to sort of see what's going on here um, before we look at an example. Let's just take a look and see, you know, what if n was equal to 2? So what if I was squaring this number? Then what we would really have is just r cis of theta times r cis of theta using that um, <laughs> um, easy abbreviated notation. So we're multiplying these two together and we would get um, from our previous theorem that this would be multiply the moduli together and add those angles together, which would turn out to be r squared times cis of 2 theta. So in this case, we would get r squared times cis of 2 theta. And you can imagine if we did that um, with the third power, we would just multiply three of those together. So our power would be three and our angle would be three times fourth power, et cetera. Well, what about the ninth power of this? So we're going to um, find the ninth power of square root of three over two plus um, one half i. This theorem really helps us out here. It really does us a solid because we would have to multiply that together nine times. There would be nine sort of um, Distri distributions there, and that would be a nightmare. So this theorem is really powerful. Let's um, do a new share and see how this works out. Okay, so here's my example, and I've written this um, number out in its complex plane. So we go over root three over two and up one half. I have to convert it to trig form, so if I use this triangle, of course, you know, this is going to be a special triangle because we have root three over two and one half. If you want to use the Pythagorean theorem, we can certainly do that. So r is equal to the square root or r squared is equal to one half squared plus root three over two squared. And then r squared is equal to one half plus, whoops, one fourth, right? careful there, plus three fourths, and then that's going to be one. So r is equal to plus or minus square root of one, but it's a triangle, so we have to have positive length. So our modulus is equal to one. Again, we could have saw, seen that because we have a one to root three to two triangle, and we're having it. So we have one and we get one half. We have square root of three over two, square root of three, we get square root of three over two, and we have two and we get one. Okay, and now we know that this angle here, the argument, we could use inverse tangent of one half over root three over two, but we know since it's the smallest side of a 30, 60, 90 triangle, that this theta is just going to be 30 degrees. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, plug that in so we know that our number in trig form is just going to be one cis, we'll use that abbreviated notation, 30 degrees. All right, so our de Mavre's theorem here, let me scoot this up just a little bit so we can see that theorem, there it is. It basically says, if we take this number to a power, we're going to take the modulus to the power and we're gonna multiply that angle by that power. So I'll have one to the ninth times cis of nine times 30 degrees. And that's gonna be one to the ninth or one times the cis 
of 270 degrees. And 270 degrees is going to put us right over here. And we're going to go down one. So our new power is going to be down here at essentially negative i, right? Because when we think of cis, that's cosine of 270 degrees plus i sine of 270 degrees. But cosine, since we're not going left or right on the unit circle, is 0. And sine, since we're going down 1, is going to be negative 1. So we have 1 times 0 plus um, negative i, which is going to give us a negative i. I think that is so cool <laughs> that we didn't have to multiply this out nine times, saved us so much time. But sort of you can see what's happening here. So the modulus really isn't changing, but the angle is just sort of advancing through. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine multiplications. So you can see that angle just sort of advancing through when we do that nine times. It's like nine multiplications. So it really makes sense. And we would multiply this modulus, but when we multiply one, we just advance around that unit circle and we get down to here. Really cool. Let's do one more example here. So this one is a little more complicated. Um, we do know that this angle is in quadrant two. And um, it does look like this is another special triangle, but let's go ahead and turn this into trig form and then use de Mavre's theorem. Usually when I'm trying to tr turn a number into trig form, I don't know about you, but I like to plot it. It just gives me a sense of what we've been doing all along. So when I plot this number here in trig form, that's the imaginary axis. Um, I'm going to be at an angle over here at halfway between quadrant, well, qu the halfway point in quadrant two. And my cosine, my root three, is going to be going out here. So that's negative 1.732 approximately. And then I'm going to be going up one for i. So it's going to be looking like right about there. OK, so when I make my triangle here, there's my w. I have negative root 3, and I have plus 1. And so we can use what we know about triangles. So I have a 1 to root 3 to 2. So my modulus of w is going to be 2. And then my angle is going to be hinging on this um, reference angle. So my reference angle. Oh yeah, I need to be careful here. I said it was halfway between, so this is not, this is not negative root three and one, and this is not two. Let me try again there. So this one's going to be more like this, correct? So we'll have negative root three. I apologize there. So this one is going to actually have a modulus of rate of root three, and we're going to have an angle of three pi over four. So in this case, we are going to, um, we already have this in trig form, so I didn't really have to do this. All right. So this is much easier. If I wanted to convert it back into regular standard form, um, I'd have to do that. But this one we just do in trig form. So I take that modulus, root 3, and I raise it to the 8th power. So that's from this theorem up here, de Mavre. And then if I write this in sort of the um, shortcut notation, I have 3 pi over 4. And then I multiply by the power 8. So let's see what happens here. I have root 3 to the 8. Well, root 3 squared, if I wrote that as root 3 squared to the 4th, 
that's going to be 3 to the 4th. I could also use a calculator here, but I'm going to be all fancy. So root 3 squared is 3. 3 to the 4th is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. That's 81. And then I multiply out my angle here. So 8 times 3 is 24 pi over 4, which would give me 81 cis times pi, 6 pi. All right, so that's my answer. So that was how easy it was to multiply this by itself eight times. Um, granted, it was given in trig notation, so or trig form. So if it is given in trig form, you want to use the Demarvis theorem. So if we wanted to know the standard form of this, it wouldn't be too bad. So that's where I can use my triangle over here. So I can do six pi. So that's one revolution, two pi, two revolutions, four pi, three revolutions, six pi. And I'm going to be ending up on the real z axis. And if I make these in steps of 10, I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. So I would be right about here. That would be my um, W, which is just equal to 81. Isn't that amazing? So I have a complex number um, raised to the eighth power, and I get a purely real number. So this is going to be equal to 81 times the cosine of 6 pi plus I sine of 6 pi, 81 times what well, we know we're here. So cosine of 6 pi is just like cosine of 0. And sine of 6 pi is just like sine of 0. So we have 0 I. So it does turn out with these complex numbers that when I um, raise a number to a power, I could get something purely imaginary like I did here. or I could get something purely real like I did here. Very interesting. So this is a good application of this Demavris theorem. We're going to look at one more um, in the next video, and that's going to be division. Thanks.